Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Sunday afternoon session of Tess Reading Club. Today, as a surprise, I am reading in this session because all the Tess Reading Club members are tired after one year of reading and they're preparing for net exam. Guys, today we will be reading Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking by Walt Whitman. So I will share my screen and you can read along with me. Tess Reading Club has completed one year of successful reading activities. This is something started one year ago by one of our students, Sumi, and a lot of people enthusiastically joined. And every Sunday, they have been reading classics, novels, plays, poetry. This is not uh, something that I organize at all. Not even anybody from TESS is directly involved. The students from across India, the enthusiasts of literature, they are doing this. And reading classics has been a very uh, fulfilling experience for everyone. So today we are reading Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking. And uh, this is a poem that represents the spirit of America and the spirit of Walt Whitman. Um, as you know, Walt Whitman was a very major 19th century American poet. I will just give you an introduction and explanation before I read as well as while I read without uh, interfering with the effect of the poem. Walt Whitman was born in 1819. That was a year in which many people, important literary figures were born. And this is the period of American romanticism. Whitman was born into a farming family in Long Island. Long Island is a place near New York City. And this poem is also set in Long Island in Pomanoc, that is the uh, Red Indian name for Long Island. Even though Whitman's family eventually moved to Brooklyn in New York, he used to go there as a child to Long Island to be with his grandparents. And he was very much in touch with the rural community and culture there. Whitman eventually became uh, an apprentice to a printer, a school teacher, a journalist, a writer. But he carried within himself this childhood experience at Long Island. And he's telling us about a young boy who is probably himself maturing into an adult and a poet. This poem, Out of the Cradle Endlessly Rocking, is belonging to the birth of the poet genre. Birth of the poet genre. This is a typical romantic genre which has been employed by Walt, uh, sorry, um, William Wordsworth, etc. And uh, this shows the development from immaturity to maturity, from physical sensations to intellectual reflection. And uh, Walt Whitman also shows the spirit of the individual or democratic sentiment in this poem. This poem, Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking, is written like an elegy. An elegy is a very passionate uh, poem. And as you know, as I already mentioned, this is the adult reminiscing his past. This is something that William Wordsworth has done a lot. Uh, the adult recollecting his emotions in tranquility about his childhood. And uh, this poem originally was titled A Child's Reminiscence. It was also called A Word Out of the Sea. The ch a child's reminiscence, a word out of the sea. These were original titles of Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking. 
out of the cradle endlessly rocking is a very symbolic title where the sea is the cradle the sea being the mother because life originated in the sea the sea is also a grave people die in the sea it is both the symbol of the beginning of life as well as the end whitman was associated with the transcendentalists the transcendentalists and whitman were influenced by eastern philosophy and uh, here you see the theme of rebirth the sea is like a mother the cradle is endlessly rocking the swinging motion forward backward motion is representing rebirth so from the title this poem employs symbolism this is a deeply romantic poem which has striking imagery and symbolism the vision of the sea uh, and its rocking motion is the most important symbol now let me uh, read out the poem itself and explain a little bit as we read out of the cradle endlessly rocking out of the cradle endlessly rocking out of the mocking bird's throat the musical shuttle out of the ninth month midnight over the sterile sands and the fields beyond where the child leaving his bed wandered alone bare headed bare foot down from the showered halo up from the mystic play of shadows twining and twisting as if they were alive out of the patches of briars and blackberries so here he is talking about a child wandering he is just an elemental human being bare headed bare foot it is midnight he is alone and look at the lines out of the out of the out of the it is repeated adverbial phrases and adverbial elements prepositional elements these are continuously being repeated throughout the poem you can see from 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 this creates itself a swinging motion you know you start from out of the swing out and again come back to out of the the lines itself is like a swinging motion and you here we have a lonely individual and a very vulnerable child but then in the poem you see that this child who is part of nature you see a lot of natural description here mystic description spiritual mystic natural all these combining with the human being the individual and ultimately you see that it is all part of the sea part of the humanity the humanity itself is like the sea there is a oneness that emerges from all this myriad descriptions so many different 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 descriptions throughout the poem ultimately the swinging motion coming back to the beginning and ultimately everything is tied together by nature that romantic theme unites these different perceptions that are provided in the poem let me continue reading out from the patches of briars and blackberries from the memories of the bird that chanted to me the adult poet is saying that he has a memory as a child and he is remembering a bird from your memories sad brother he is now addressing the bird from your memories sad brother calling the bird the brother from the fitful risings and fallings i heard you know this is a symbolic poem every single image every single symbol is not immediately clear because there is a mystic mysterious element to these symbols so everything is not crystal clear in such a romantic poem from your memories sad brother from the fitful risings and fallings i heard from under that yellow half moon late risen and swollen as if with tears oh that is so beautiful 
from under that yellow half moon, late risen and swollen as if with tears. From those beginning notes of yearning and love there in the mist. From the thousand responses of my heart never to cease. From the myriad thence aroused words. From the word stronger and more delicious than any. From such as now they start the scene revisiting. Again, he is moving backward and forward in his memory. He is remembering the words associated with that memory. He is remembering and again remembering, revisiting as a flock and all this mixed with nature images. As a flock, twittering, rising, overhead passing. He is remembering flocks of birds. As a flock, twittering, rising, overhead passing. Born hither, er all eludes me hurriedly. Life is passing. Nature is passing in front of us. Birds are flying, eluding. Hurriedly, a man, yet by these tears, a little boy again. When you remember your childhood, when you remember those childhood tears, in your adulthood, you become a little boy again, once again. A man, yet by these tears, a little boy again. Throwing myself on the sand, confronting the waves. I, today, I'm no longer a little boy, I'm an adult poet. I, chanter of pains and joys, uniter of here and hereafter. In me, there is a union of this present moment and the future. So I am the past. I am the little boy. I am my memory. And I'm uniting it with the present and the hereafter or future. Everything is ultimately one. I, chanter of pains and joys, uniter of here and hereafter, taking all hints to use them, but swift, swiftly leaping beyond them. Uh, once, Paumanok, when the lilac scent was in the air, you know that Lilac is an important symbol in uh, Walt Whitman. When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed there, lilac is a symbol of crucifixion. Lilac is a symbol of death. Lilac is a symbol of passion. So when the lilac scent was in the air and fifth month grass was growing up this seashore in some briars, all these nature symbols are related to uh, biblical themes and two sufferings of life. They are all very intricate uh, expressions of experience. In that Paumanok beach, what happened to feathered guests from Alabama? Alabama is a little far away. It is in the towards the south. Two feathered guests means two birds. Two feathered guests from Alabama. Two together and their nest and four light green eggs spotted with brown. They came, made their nest, laid their eggs. And every day, the child is seeing the birds in Pomenog Beach. And every day, the he bird to and fro near at hand. The he bird is flying to and fro, helping the she bird who is sitting on the nest. And every day, the she bird crouched on her nest silent with bright eyes and every day I a curious boy look at the repetition that is a very important technique he's using and every day I a curious boy never too close never disturbing them cautiously peering absorbing translating the boy is translating the uh, the cry of the birds he is trying to understand what the birds are saying. Shine, shine, shine. The birds are singing. Pour down your warmth, great sun, while we bask two together, we two together. Two together. Winds blow south or winds blow north. Whatever happens, we both are together. Day come white or night come black. 
home or rivers and mountains from home, singing all the time, minding no time, while we too keep together. He is glorifying the relationship of these birds. He is glorifying love. He is glorifying uh, the togetherness of the uh, living things. Till of a sudden, you know, suddenly without expanding on it, without uh, romantically proceeding with it, suddenly life is cut short. Till of a sudden, may be killed, unknown to her mate. One forenoon, the she bird crouched not on the nest. One day, the she bird is not seen. What happened to her? Maybe she is killed. Her mate, the he bird, the male bird, did not know what happened. Not returned that afternoon, nor the next, nor ever appeared again. Life is like that. It suddenly is cut short. And the he bird does not know what happened to the she bird. Joys are like that. Suddenly they will be cut short. And thenceforward, all summer in the sound of the sea. From then onwards, throughout that summer. So all this happened in the summer season. Summer season is the season of joy. But here is a bird who lost its mate and is crying and crying to the sea. And thenceforward all summer in the sound of the sea and at night under the full of the moon in calmer weather over the hoarse surging of the sea. The boy is hearing the cry of the bird throughout the summer. For the first time, the boy is experiencing this kind of a sorrow. The boy is experiencing this kind of uh, suffering. He has never seen such things before. So he is noticing the over the whole surging of the sea or flitting from briar to briar. Briar is a plant. Every uh, day by day he is hearing, I saw, I heard at intervals the remaining one, the he bird, the solitary guest from Alabama. He's hearing the cry of the he bird after the female bird disappears. What he listens to the he bird's cries and what is the he bird saying? Blow, 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 blow up sea winds along Paumanok's shore. I wait and wait till you blow my mate to me. The he bird is crying. I wait and wait till you blow my mate to me. The bird is crying, but nothing happened. Yes, when the stars glistened all night long on the prong of the moss scalloped stake, down almost amid the slapping waves, sat the lone singer, ca wonderful causing tears. The boy could hear the bird and he was crying to see the suffering of the bird. What is the bird doing? He called on his mate. He poured forth the meaning which I of all men know. Today, I have grown into a man, a poet. Today, I know the meaning of that cry. At that time, as a child, I was bewildered. I couldn't understand. But today, I understand. Yes, my brother, I know. The poet is saying, yes, my brother, I know. The rest might not, other people might not, but I have treasured every note. I heard every note that you sang. I treasured it for more than once, dimly down on the beach, gliding, silent, avoiding the moonbeams. Because of the sorrow, I avoided the light of the moon, blending myself with the shadows. I walked along the beach, recalling now the obscure shapes, the echoes, the sounds and sights after their thoughts. The white arms out in the breakers, tirelessly tossing. I, with bare feet, a child, the wind wafting my hair, listened long and long. This is a very romantic idea. You have to listen for a long time to nature. You have to listen to other people. That is your learning. You learn from experience. You learn from nature. You learn from suffering. This is there in Wordsworth. This is there in Walt Whitman. Listened long and long. Listened to keep. 
to sing. That listening made me a poet. In that moment, when I understood your suffering, I slowly turned into a poet. I started to sing myself, listened to keep, to sing, now translating the notes, following you, my brother. And then the song, Sooth, 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 close on its wave, soothes the wave behind. The sea is like the mother. When we suffer, when we cry, the sea is there forever, soothing us with her waves. And again, another behind embracing and lapping, one after the other, come the waves, everyone close. But my love soothes not me, not me. But in my heart, there is no soothing. There is no uh, peace. I'm suffering because I don't know why you are crying. Why you have to suffer like this? I'm so sad. As a boy, low hangs the moon. That's a very famous expression. Low hangs the moon. It, low, it rose late. It is lagging. Oh, I think it is heavy with love. With love. It is lagging. The moon is lagging. It is heavy with love. Oh, madly, the sea pushes upon the land. The sea is pushing upon the land madly with love, with love. He's experiencing the nature more deeply. Oh, night, do I not see my love fluttering out among the breakers? The male bird is searching for his love. Is she anywhere? Where is she? What is that little black thing I see there in the white? What is it I see there? What is that black thing that I see there? He's searching loud, 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 loud. I call to you, my love. The bird is calling out to the female bird, but it is not coming. Why is he suffering so much? High and clear. I shoot my voice over the waves. Surely you must know who is here is here. Now you are wondering who exactly is speaking here. Is it the boy or the bird? It is like mixed up. This is a beautiful technique that the poet is using. The boy is identifying with the bird. The boy's suffering is like the bird's suffering. The boy's cry is like the bird's cry. And the boy is experiencing, empathizing with the bird. Low hanging moon, there is pathetic fallacy. He is experiencing nature suffering along with the humans. Low hanging moon, what is that dusky spot in your brown yellow? Oh, it is the shape, the shape of my mate. The bird is thinking that this is the mate. Oh, moon, do not keep her from me any longer. Land, land, oh land, whichever way I turn, oh, I think you could give me my mate back again if you only would. For I am almost sure I see her dimly whichever way I look. Your suffering makes you feel like your sorrow is there everywhere in nature. Nature is like that, it feels along with us. Because you're searching for your mate, you feel like your mate is there in nature everywhere you look. Oh, rising stars, perhaps the one I want so much will rise, will rise with some of you. See, you are not alone. You are not alone. You are one with nature. Your sorrow is not only your own. It is the sorrow of this universe. Everything is one. The boy, the bird, the suffering, the ocean, the briar, the moon. Oh, throat, oh, trembling throat. Sound clearer through the atmosphere. Pierce the woods, the earth. Somewhere listening to catch you must be the one I want. Shake out carols, solitary here. The night's carols, the night itself is singing carols of lonesome love. Death's carols. Death. Night and suffering is now identified with death. Carols under that lagging yellow waning moon. Oh, under that moon where she droops almost down into the sea. The moon is almost so low 
that it is like she's going to fall into the sea. Oh, reckless, despairing carols. So emotional, so expressive. Nature itself is, but soft. Sing low, soft. Let me just murmur. Or do you wait a moment, you husky, noised sea? For somewhere, I believe, I heard my mate responding to me. This is such a long song that the bird is singing. And now the bird is addressing the sea. So faint, I feel like I heard my mate's cry. So faint, I must be still. Be still to listen. But not altogether still. For then she might not come immediately to me. So the sufferings of the mind, the desperations of the mind. Do I see my mate somewhere? Is Did I hear her call? Should I remain silent? Then will she miss me? All these thoughts. Hither, my love. Come to me, my love. Hither, my love. Here I am here. With this just sustained note, I announce myself to you. This gentle call is for you, my love, for you. Do not be decoyed elsewhere. This is the whistle of the wind. It is not my voice. It is the fluttering, the fluttering of the spray. Those are, those are the shadows of leaves. He is now thinking, is it my voice that I'm hearing? No, he's hearing the voice of the ocean, the voice of the night. Oh, darkness. Oh, in vain. Oh, I am very sick and sorrowful. Look at the repetition of the oh, oh, oh sound. Oh, brown halo in the sky near the moon, drooping upon the sea. Oh, troubled reflection in the sea. Oh, throat, oh, throbbing heart. And I singing uselessly, uselessly all the night. He is alone, singing in the night, feeling useless. And this cry of the bird is like a song. The bird is crying, crying. The bird, birds cry. The boy is interpreting. Oh, past, last stanza of the bird's cry. Oh, past, oh, happy life. Oh, songs of joy. He's remembering the past. There was so much joy in this life. It's not just sorrow. Oh, songs of joy in the air, in the woods, over fields. Loved, loved. Loved, loved, loved. So many different kinds of love. Every time it is repeated, it is a different expression of love. But my mate, no more, no more with me. We two together, no more. The boy is listening to the cry of the bird and he's hearing this. The cry of the bird is the area. It is called the area. And the boy hears it, the area sinking. All else continuing. It is like the bird's song is not affecting nature in some sense because everything is continuing. At the same time, nature is also like uh, mourning along with the bird. All else continuing. That means it is a sense of rebirth. It is a sense of eternal life. Even though death is so sorrowful, life will continue. That idea we get here. There will be rebirth. Even though we are suffering, life will again and again and again come like the waves of the ocean. All else continuing, the stars shining, the winds blowing, the notes of the bird continuously echoing with angry moans, the fierce old mother, the sea incessantly moaning on the sands of Pomenox, shore gray and rustling. At the night time, the sea is looking gray and rustling. The yellow half moon enlarged, sagging down, drooping. The face of the sea almost touching. The boy ecstatic. With his bare feet, the waves. You know, to be with the mother, to be with the ocean. It's an ecstasy. There all your sorrows end. The boy ecstatic with his bare feet, the waves, with his hair, the atmosphere dallying. The love in the heart long pent, now loose, now at last tumultuously bursting. You know, the sorrow is one, is combined, is merged with love. It is long pent, long waste, long spent. 
and loose and tumultuously bursting. The area's meaning, the ears, the soul swiftly depositing, the strange tears down the cheeks coursing. The colloquy there, the trio each uttering, the undertone, the savage old mother incessantly crying. To the boy's soul's question, sullenly timing, some drowned secret hissing to the outsetting bard. The, the boy has a question to the sea. The boy's soul is asking a question. And in this tumultuous sounds of the universe, he's asking that question. Demon or bird, said the boy's soul. Is it indeed to word your mate you sing? Or is it really to me? For I that was a child, my tongue's use sleeping. Now I have heard you. Now in a moment, I know what I am for. I awake. Like an epiphany, the boy is awakened into a realization. The bird is crying out to its mate. But the boy feels like that cry is for him. Because it is he who is awakened. And already a thousand singers, a thousand songs clearer, louder and more sorrowful than yours. A thousand warbling echoes have started to live within me never to die. Because he has turned into a poet. The birth of the poet has happened. The poet has in his mind a thousand songs that have all originated from the bird's song. Oh, you singer solitary singing by yourself, projecting me. Oh, solitary me listening. Never more shall I cease perpetuating you. Never more shall I escape. Never more the reverberations. Never more the cries of unsatisfied love be absent from me. I will never more be alone. I will always be reverberating with your echoes, with your song, with your feelings. Never again leave me to the peaceful child I was before, what there in the night. Before that night, I was just a child. I will never be just a child now. I have got the experience of life through your song. By the sea, under the yellow and sagging moon, the messenger there aroused, the messenger from Alabama, the fire, the sweet hell within, the unknown want, the destiny of me. I am no longer the satisfied child. I have the unknown want. I have the restless quest of the poet. Oh, give me the clue. It lurks in the night here somewhere. What is the clue? What is that word that is the answer to all these questions? Oh, if I am to have so much, let me have more. Answer my question. What is that like Buddha, like Siddhartha, the Buddha? He's asking, what is the meaning of this suffering? What is the answer to our questions? What is that word? Give me that. And the sea replies to him, a word then, for I will conquer it. The word final, superior to all. Why are we all struggling? Why are you studying? Why are you listening to this uh, poem, trying to understand? Why are you writing exams? Why are you going to work? Because there is one word that we are all afraid of. There is one word that, word that is superior to everything else. That there is one word towards which we are all going. What is it? I listen. Are you whispering it? And have been all the time. You see waves. The sea is whispering. Is that it from your liquid rims and wet sands? Where to answering the sea? To that the sea is answering. Delaying not. Hurrying not. Without any hurry, the sea answers, whispered me through the night. And very plainly before daybreak, what is the sea whispering? <sighs> Lisped to me the low and delicious word, death. We are all afraid of death. We are all moving towards death. It is that death that we are trying to keep away. We need to enjoy life. We need money. We need success. We need health. We need people around us. We need love. Everything is because of this word, death. And again, the sea is whispering, death, 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 death. Like the word love was whispered again, again, again. The same word repeated with different connotations. Hissing, melodious. Neither like the bird, nor like my aroused child's heart. 
but edging near as privately for me, rustling at my feet. Creeping thence steadily up to my ears and laving me softly all over. Like the ocean waves, this world is coming and lashing over him, giving him a new awareness of life. Death, 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 death which I do not forget, and fuse the song of my dusky demon and brother. That is the bird. The bird's song fuses with mine. We are united in death. You lost your mate to death. And I have lost my childhood because of this new awareness of death. That he sang to me in the moonlight on Paumanok's gray beach with the thousand responsive songs at random. My own songs awaked from that hour and with them the key, the word up from the waves, the word of the sweetest song of all songs. Every song is about this one word ultimately. And death is not a sad, tragic thing because death is about eternal life. The whole poem shows us the eternal life through the symbol of sea. The whole poem is about eternal life triumphing over death. The whole uh, song is about humanity or universe triumphing over the individual suffering. Be not afraid. Be not sad because you are part of this eternal project of life, the eternal purpose of life to go on and on and on like the waves of the ocean. That strong and delicious word Death becomes a delicious word. It becomes a strong word because it makes that death, one word, makes us part of humanity. That word makes us part of this world, of this universe. Makes us part of the eternal project of this world of God. That strong and delicious word. It is like Aham Brahmasmi. I am just an individual who will die. But when I die, I become part of the universe. I become part of the Paramatma. Tattva Masi. I am that Brahman. That is me. You understand? There is an oriental element here. That strong and delicious word, death, which creeping to my feet because of the waves of the ocean. And also, death is always creeping towards us. Or like some old crone. Old crone means like an old grandmother rocking the cradle, swathed in sweet garments, bending aside. Like an old grandmother, the sea is rocking the cradle because death is also birth. Sea is the grave, but it is also the cradle. The sea whispered me. The child died metaphorically, but the poet is born. From every death, there will be a birth. In every suffering, there is a joy. When in every loss, there is a gain. There is a tremendous feeling of optimism and positivity that you can see in this poem. There is a democratic spirit when every individual suffers and dies. The humanity is so much benefited from our learning, from our life. The whole humanity is benefited. You know, when we suffer, there are so many other people who learn from us. We are contributing to this world in so many wonderful ways. When he, in Tess Reading Club, each of you are reading, you know, so many of you have selflessly volunteered to read. You did not get anything out of it except experience and joy. But it is not only that individual's experience and joy when each person reads in YouTube. There are so many people, hundreds and thousands. Eventually, after years, there will be millions who listen to you. Maybe from there, you might inspire people. You might, uh, you know, inspire people to read, to pass exams. Who knows? Even after we are gone, these videos that we make, the little things that we do in life will continue to inspire humanity. Let us all do wonderful things. Little, little things. Let us all be gods of small things. Let us all do wonderful, small, small things because it will take 
humanity a long way. Each and every one of us matters. That is what Walt Whitman tells us through this beautiful, wonderful poem, Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking. So with that, we come to the end of this reading. I hope you enjoyed it. This was from Tess Reading Club. If you want to join our Tess Reading Club group, please look at the description of the video. We'll give you the uh, Telegram link there. Join us. Even if you don't want to read, you can still join us. And you can volunteer for the next uh, Reading Club session. We have some volunteers. We will be organizing a rehearsal and then you will be reading. Occasionally, we will be sending you some gifts of appreciation. But every time you read, uh, all that you get is endless joy of reading. And people who are reading like this are really growing because of the experience of the poem. So thank you, Tess Reading Club members, for giving me this opportunity to read uh, with you, for you today. Uh, and congratulations, Tess Reading Club, for having completed one year successfully. I'm really, really proud of you, uh, all the readers and the organizers. Thank you very much. We will meet again next Sunday at 2 p.m. Thank you very much, guys. I am ending the session. <laughs>